Hi guys, gonna let you guys know I got me a cup of tea. It's defending Elvis Presley fans want the truth. Look, no grey hair. No grey hair of the miracle of technology. So defending and I've even had a shave. I've even had a shave. Look how I looked 20 years ago. <laughs> Why does the face get droopy as you get older? I'm 57. Defending Elvis Presley, fans want the truth. Um, with Team Elvis, I'm going to give a little time for you guys to join us. Uh, we've just been to McDonald's. I went for a two-mile run, uh, walk, sorry, um, with the dogs. Nothing spectacular happening. My wife has taken my son, Giovanni, who's 15, to a Bristol City football match. So I've got a good hour. Um, hi, Emily. Hope you're well. I haven't told everyone that we're live yet. So we're going to cover a few topics today. Let me just go. This is my wife. Look. At a football match with Giovanni. So she's sending me a few pictures. Uh, look at her. Just, she's being funny there. Look. Let's have a look. So, Bristol City, right, a very famous city near where I live. I live in Western Supermare, and Bristol is 20 minutes from here. It's very close. Brilliant city. So, um, uh, we did a very good live this morning. Great topics this morning. So, if you missed it, go back and watch it. Um, you'll, I think you'll find it enjoyable. We've even got a a song right at the beginning to surprise you all, guys. Hi, Stacey. Hi, Jean. So obviously, get yourselves... Um, all right, Stacey's getting ready for church. I hope that goes well and you enjoy that. Emily, you're very welcome. Um, now, I wanted to do a vid another Spotlight Spy video. Spotlight Spy is a brilliant um, YouTube channel. The lady who runs it, I should know her name, I don't know her name, um, unfortunately has stopped at the moment temporarily making videos, but they are just so good. I wonder if there's any information. Right, go on then, call me when you're finished. Uh, I wonder if it gives me the name of the, the lady that runs it. Um, no? Gives no name. <clears throat> I wonder if Presley's multi-million dollar estate. Let's just see if we can, because I'd like to give her recognition. Her videos are great. She does many about Priscilla, Lisa Marie, Scientology, Elvis's will, um, the potential takeover of Graceland. Then you've got the divorce decree of Priscilla. There's just so many brilliant topics that Spotlight Spy has covered. Uh, and her research is excellent. Now, let me just see if it's going to give me any details of her name. Um, let's have a look. Um, no, she doesn't give a name. She does say, with a heavy heart, she has taken the decision... So basically, for now, temporarily, to stop making videos. Which is a shame, because her videos are amazing. Right, so um, I'm going to kick off talking about the divorce decree. The divorce decree, because that, that carries on from the topic we were covering this morning. So I'm going to get straight into it. You guys, give me your views as you go. And it's going to take a while for some of you guys to jump on. And we're going to play a few of these uh, Spotlight Spy uh, videos. Please subscribe to Spotlight Spy. And I give a special thank you to Spotlight Spy because she has made my job much easier because she really has put a lot of time into these videos. And... Um, she is a proper researcher. 
I'm not. I'm just a fan at home in his kitchen with his kids and his dogs. Um, and I rely on things like this to get my message out there, defending Elvis Presley, trying to right the wrongs, trying to uh, help the Elvis fans. And how can I say it? We are so proud of Elvis. We love Elvis. But unfortunately, the general public are not. And we, as Elvis defenders, hi Vincenzo, can make a difference. We can make non-Elvis fans understand that Elvis isn't as he has been portrayed with all the negative stuff that is out there at the moment. So let's talk about Priscilla and the divorce. settlement agreement is made this 15th day of August 1972 at Los Angeles, California between Elvis Aaron Presley, here and after referred to as husband, and Priscilla Presley, here and after referred to as wife. The parties hereto contract with reference to the following facts. The parties are husband and wife and were married on May 1st, 1967 in Las Vegas, Nevada. There is one child the issue of said marriage, Lisa M. Presley. Born February 1st, 1968. Husband's social security number is redacted. Wife's social security number is redacted. Unfortunate circumstances and unhappy differences have arisen between the parties by reason of which they have lived separate and apart since February 23rd, 1972, and by reason of which they intend to dissolve their marriage through a petition, therefore, to be filed by husband in the Los Angeles Superior Court. By the property settlement agreement, the parties wish to avoid unnecessary litigation and the emotional stress and expense which would accompany same and to forever, finally, and completely settle their property interests as between themselves, their heirs, successors, and assigns, and all questions and controversies concerning their respective interests in each and every item of property owned by the parties, whether held as separate property, community property, or quasi-community property, on in joint tenancy or otherwise. Each party agrees not to request this property settlement agreement's incorporation into or merger as a part of an interlocutory judgment of dissolution. This agreement shall survive the execution and delivery by either of us of any and all instruments mentioned in it, and shall not depend for its effectiveness on the approval of a court, or be affected thereby. Any reconciliation of the parties shall not cancel, terminate, or modify the force or effect of any provision of this agreement, it being the express intention of the parties that this property settlement agreement can only be modified by an instrument in writing. Section 1. Community Property after a complete disclosure of all assets and sources of income, husband and wife agree that the community property of the parties is as follows. A single family residence located at 1174 Hillcrest Road, Beverly Hills, California. A single family residence located at 144 Monovale Drive, Los Angeles, California. A single family residence located at 845 China Canyon Road, Palm Springs, California. A 1971 Mercedes-Benz automobile. Identification number 021029. A 1969 Cadillac Eldorado Automobile, Tennessee license number 1, S3988. A 1971 Harley Davidson Motorcycle. Cash in various bank accounts. Section 2. Division of Community Property. A. As and for a full settlement of all right, title, and interest, the wife may have in and to any property now in the name of the husband or in the name of the husband jointly with others, including all community property set forth here and above in paragraph one, the wife hereby agrees to accept as and for her full settlement of any community or quasi-community property rights she may have in said property, the following. One, a 1971 Mercedes-Benz automobile, identification number 021029. Two, a 1969 Cadillac Eldorado automobile, Tennessee license number one. S3988. 3. A 1971 Harley Davidson motorcycle. 4. 
cash in the sum of $100,000, $100,000, said sum to be payable, $50,000, $50,000, within five, five days of the execution of this property settlement agreement, and $50,000, $50,000, on or before August 20th, 1973, initialed by EAP and Priscilla B., as and for a full settlement of all right, title, and interest the husband may have in and to any property now in the name of wife, or in the name of the wife jointly with others, including all community property set forth here and above in paragraph 1. Husband hereby agrees to accept, as and for his full settlement of any community or quasi-community property rights her may have in said property, the following. 1. The single family residence located at 1174 Hillcrest Road, Beverly Hills, California. 2. The single family residence located at 144 Montevale Drive, Los Angeles, California. 3. The single family residence located at 845 Chino Canyon Road, Palm Springs, California. Section 3. Husband's Separate Property. Wife hereby agrees and acknowledges that all other property of whatsoever kind and nature and wherever located, real, personal, or mixed, which is possessed and or owned by husband, and or which is in husband's name and or held for husband's account or benefit, constitutes husband's sole and separate property. And wife hereby assigns and quit claims to husband, as of the date of execution of this property settlement agreement, any and all right title or interest which she may have in all of said property. Section 4. Execution of Further Documents Each of the parties hereby agrees that, promptly upon demand of the other party at any time hereafter, he or she will make, execute, acknowledge and deliver all such deeds, transfers, assignments or further instruments and will do or cause to be done all such acts and things as reasonably shall be required by either of them to effectuate the intentions of this agreement and to assure to each of them and to their respective successors transferees and assigns all and singular the property described or referred to or hereby intended to be conveyed assigned set over transferred or to belong to each of them and to confirm and assure title possession and right thereto according to the purpose and intent of this agreement as expressed section 5 assignment of insurance the party receiving specific property under this property settlement agreement is entitled to and the other party hereby transfers and assigns to him or her all of his or her right title and interest in and to whatever insurance exists with respect to such property and the benefits if any with respect to the premiums heretofore paid for or on account of such insurance. The party receiving such specific property and insurance policy applicable thereto shall be solely responsible for the payment of all premiums due after the effective date of this agreement in connection with each such insurance policy, if such party shall decide in his or her sole discretion to maintain said policy in force. Section 6. Payment of Community Obligations a. Husband agrees that he shall pay, assume, and hold wife harmless from all debts incurred by the parties, or either of them, prior to the effective date of this agreement, which have been disclosed and are presently known by him. B. Neither party shall incur any indebtedness chargeable against the other, or his or her estate, from and after the effective date of this agreement, nor contract any debt or obligation in the name of the other and each party agrees to indemnify and hold the other harmless from and against any such indebtedness or obligation incurred or created by such indemnifying party. Each of the parties hereby warrants to the other that he and then here is where some pages were unavailable. Into in the state of California, and shall be construed and interpreted under and in accordance with the laws of the state of California. Should any of the terms or provisions of this agreement or any clause or part thereof be held to be invalid, illegal, or void, the terms, provisions, clauses, or parts held to be invalid, illegal, or void shall be deleted from this agreement, and the balance of the agreement shall subsist and be of full force and effect. Section 7. Paragraph Headings. The paragraph headings used herein are for convenience only and do not purport to provide a complete or accurate summary of the contents of any paragraph. No such heading shall be deemed to have any bearing upon the construction of any part of this agreement. 
Section 8. Effective Date of This Agreement. It is hereby agreed that the effective date as herein mentioned shall be the date first above written. This agreement shall not depend for its effectiveness on the approval of the court in any action for dissolution of marriage now or hereafter pending. In witness whereof, the parties hereto have hereunto set their hands the day and year first above written, to be signed by Elvis Aaron Presley, husband, and Priscilla Ann Presley, wife, additional supplement to property settlement agreement. It is understood and agreed that it is the intention of the parties to divide their community assets equally and that the $100,000 to be received by the wife shall be tax-free to her. In the event any claim is made hereafter either by the federal government or state of California, husband agrees to defend the same and hold wife harmless of any liability thereon to pay any taxes which may hereafter be assessed. Dated this 15th day of August 1972. To be signed by Elvis Aaron Presley, husband, and Priscilla Ann Presley. Wife attorneys noted on the document are Robert I. Brock, attorney for wife and Luke Stratton, and Erwin, attorney for husband. Lawyer Lauds. Unselfishness. Elvis Presley ends marriage with a kiss and $1.5 million published in the Los Angeles Times. October 10, 1973. Singer Elvis Presley, 38, and his wife Priscilla finally ended their marriage with a friendly kiss Tuesday after Santa Monica Superior Court approved of a modified property settlement in which he will pay her nearly $1.5 million. In a private session, Judge Lawrence J. Rittenhouse granted Presley's petition for divorce and the pair emerged arm in arm. The singer kissed Priscilla, 25, before he drove away. This man agreed to pay her this without any contest, said Harry Fain, one of Presley's attorneys, because he wanted to be generous and make Met a man so unselfish. Under the new pact, replacing an initial agreement to which Priscilla subsequently objected, Presley added $725,000 in cash and another $720,000 payable at $6,000 a month to discharge any further claims on community property. Originally, Fain said, the pair agreed that he would give her $100,000 and a couple of cars. Also, Presley agreed that she shall have half the proceeds from the sale of a Los Angeles home, as well as 5% of the stock in Elvis Presley Music, Inc. and White Haven Music, Inc. She will also receive $4,200 a month support payments for a year, and $4,000 a month for the support and education of their five-year-old daughter, Lisa, until the child becomes of age or marries. The couple agreed to joint legal custody of the daughter, who will live with her mother. Priscilla Presley filed a motion last May 29th to set aside her initial concurrence in the property settlement entered when he filed for dissolution of their five-year marriage in August 1972. Until the modified agreement, she had sought to discover more about the extent of the singer's holdings, particularly music copyrights, master recordings, residuals and royalties. Presley and the former Priscilla Beaulieu were married in Las Vegas, May 1, 1967. When he filed for divorce, Presley cited irreconcilable differences because of the pressure of his constant traveling. So a special thank you to Spotlight Spy, by the way. Um, please subscribe to that channel. I mean, that is as good as it gets if you want to know the basics, yeah? I mean, I've always said it to you. The second <clears throat> divorce was brutal. The second divorce. And she had to, um, from what I know, she had to get the second divorce. She had to accuse Elvis of lying, of hiding his assets, uh, not um, disclosing his proper income so she went for the jugular guys she went all in i mean that that being read out like that i know it was quite long 15 minutes or something i don't enjoy reading documents i find reading documents really boring but when you just sit there and can relax with a cup of tea and enjoy i found it very very interesting i could listen to that two or three times and just absorb just how ruthless and cruel and greedy that Priscilla was. 
And I say that without hate. Um, and this is why we are demanding an apology from Priscilla. We want an apology, don't we, guys? We're like, you, you know, this is, I know I keep saying the same thing, but Priscilla goes on these shows and saying Elvis is the love of her life, Elvis is the love of her life. And then we listen to the details of the divorce. And that isn't the love of your life. That is not the love of your life. So I want to play another Spotlight Spy. So let's have a look, guys. I'm going to pick, I haven't decided which one I'm going to pick out, actually, guys. Now we've got, maybe I'll give you a choice. We've got one that is discussed in Navarone, and it's called, um, what, who is Navarone? We could play that, or we could speak, uh, we could play the one that is a shocking feud between Riley Q and Priscilla over the ownership of Gracelands. Do we have any favourites? Or I could pay, play both. What are you more interested in, guys? Navarone or the feud between Riley and Priscilla? What is more interesting to you guys? I could probably play both, but the feud. Right, I'm going to go with the first answer, guys. So, uh, let me share this, which one of you commented below. Thank you for bringing this up to me, because there's a reason the former manager uh, calls out Priscilla Presley. Description. Hey, I'm no longer a trustee of the trust, and there's this new amendment. That's all evidence that the most recent amendment is the valid will. So Priscilla really has an uphill battle in this case. She's going to yes. try to say that you know it's fraudulent and go through this will contest, but the evidence is pretty strong that Lisa Marie intended to cut her mom out and really move forward and provide her estate to right. her kids. Yeah, so what is, is next for Priscilla in this case going forward? I mean, I know that she's released statements saying that she wants to keep her family intact, but this seems to be doing something completely opposite. Yep. Yeah, we're going to see a trial in probate court. So there's going to be a will contest. And, you know, in these types of cases, so probate sad. cases, they're decided by a judge, not a jury. So that's some way they're a little bit different. But the judge is going to decide, is the more recent amendment, is it valid? Was this Lisa Marie's signature? Did it have witnesses? All the formalities that need to happen for a valid will or a valid trust. And if so, then Priscilla is going to be out of luck. Right. And so does that mean like Priscilla and Riley could eventually meet together in court to kind of hash this out then? Mm -hmm. Well, absolutely. I mean, Riley on one hand is the beneficiary and then you have Priscilla who's challenging it. Really the burden's on her, Priscilla. Hi, Gio. The more recent amendment is invalid. Yeah, we Good. just Good. Uh, then played the it divorce. Is, uh, the, then it is on Priscilla. And uh, I know that I feel like there are people that were closest to Lisa Marie that are rallying around her. I don't even know how Barry Siegel's going to, whether he's going to come in and say anything, whether she's going to call him. Uh, update on Lockwood, though, he he has received full custody of the twins. And I, you know, all of my past research shows uh, that Priscilla and Lockwood are, you know, they're close. So as far as Priscilla doing this to keep Lockwood away from the money, I disagree. I don't think that's the case. Also, if the twins are 14, I I think that they, there's a certain time that they'll come into their role as co-trustees. But I don't think that he would be able to get large sums of money from the trust. I think that he may be able to get child support from the trust, but I, I don't think that Riley would keep that from him. As far as I know, she's close with her sisters. This is just so sad. Uh, I was really looking forward to, well, I still am really looking forward to this Daisy Jones and the Six. Uh, Riley is just all over social media with her elaborating on her excitement from this role with this film. She sings in it. She's really happy about that. 
Um, let me tell you just a little bit what I know about it so we can all tune in. It's a limited series. It follows a fictitious Los Angeles singer, Daisy Jones, uh, as she joins a rock band. The Six, thereafter becoming one of the most famous musical acts of the 1970s. This was adapted from a book, and you know who produced it was Reese Witherspoon. And I have some videos of them in the studio, I think, either recording or something, but uh, that famous studio that, mm, that, hang on one second, uh, uh, Foo Fighters, Dave Grohl did a, a whole series on uh, uh, Sound City Studios. So he did a whole documentary on that studio, which if you haven't seen, that's really cool. Um, but Days of John the Six were uh, top of the world. Okay, so just a little bit. The series premiere will officially drop March 3rd with new episodes rolling out every Friday. There are 10 episodes. It is on Amazon Prime. And uh, this is how Riley says her quote on this movie was, my mother is certainly an inspiration to me. The actress told people I was raised by somebody who did their own thing and didn't really care what other people thought. She was definitely an inspiration for me in this role. So just, to, I think, a, a loving tribute to her mother and coming out at a time that, you know, would, would bring her probably so much joy. Uh, you know, during this time that she's lost her mother. So just kind of sad all the way around. I'm really shocked about what's happening with she and Priscilla, as well as the fact that now to learn they're not speaking and Riley is missing press functions for her movie in order to... So, so um, there's only a few seconds left. I'll play that and then I'll say something. Gather her legal team and, and fight her <clears throat> battle with Priscilla, and I believe that's going to be April 13th. Anyhow, latest news on that. Keep you posted. So basically, <clears throat> it seems to me like Spotlight Spy was this. She was like giving us regular updates. Uh, this was a year ago, yeah? Um, I don't know the exact month. She was sort of keeping us up to speed on what was happening. So from what I hear now... It had just come out that Priscilla was going to contest um, Lisa Marie's what she wanted. Yeah, she obviously wanted everything to go to the kids. So this possible feud, this possible lawsuit, was about to happen, and we're sort of seeing Spotlight Spies take on things as they were going to unfold. Okay, so uh, hi, Lily. Lisa Kirsty is a big. A big Elvis fan. All right. Well, she's very welcome. Uh, was she part of this this channel? I've heard, I've watched this channel before. Um, I think Elaine um, told me about this channel. Let me just tell Elaine that we're, that we're live. Um, let's have a look. Uh, let me just tell Elaine that we're live. Um, didn't he announce this big show that's going to happen. Elaine was talking to me about it, this sort of 3D um, show, this, this Elvis show, isn't it in Scotland or something? And he was, she was talking about, I think she wants to book tickets. Uh, this, let me just, what's the channel called again? It's, it's the, it's a YouTube channel, isn't it? Let's have a look. The censor just said it to me. Um, Uh, let's have a look. Oh, what was it? I can't even see it now. I've lost it. Uh, what was it called again for sensor? I've lost. I don't know. I've lost it. Let's have a look. Let me see if I can find it. Yes, I noticed that Priscilla is on TikTok now. She's promoting. She's on TikTok. 
Right, Steve's channel has is called Elvis the Ultimate Fan Channel, which I think I've watched it before. Um, was Kirsty part of it, or did she just join in with it? So yeah, Kirsty's very welcome. Yeah, so was she like part of? You know, is she one of the team there, or is she just a fan of that channel? Yes, I, and we, yeah, I watched the Mike Stone interview with with Steve. I did watch it. I've watched it twice. Uh, I thought Steve was quite kind to him, to be honest with you. I thought Steve could have been a bit more ruthless. But he's obviously a good guy. Uh, so we've got... Morning, all. How are we doing? Uh, Chrissa, I've been playing some Spotlight Spy stuff. We're going to play a few more bits today. All right, she actually was part of it. That's interesting. So I always like it when other channels... Elvis channels, defending Elvis channels, um, join in with us. Um, I don't, I don't think Steve, it, Steve's channel is a defending Elvis channel. I think it, he's just an Elvis channel, which is fine. Uh, am I right or am I wrong? Uh, but it does seem like a very good channel, very interesting. I know he does a lot of competitions. I know he does phone-ins. Um, Tyler, just keep him quiet a bit. So behind me is Tina, who's four, and my daughter, who's 18, Talia. Right. Um, let's just keep looking. Yeah, I've watched it a few times. They seem... He seems a very passionate Elvis channel. Yeah, that's the one. Vicenzo's saying it. There's in London, and it's an artificial intelligence Elvis show. Yes, and I think Steve announced it, didn't he? Is that correct? Yes, I've noticed that. And when you see his screen up, there's lots of different things that you can either text or phone in. I think he uses WhatsApp. Um, he does daily competitions. Does that sound right? Or weekly competitions. So I'm very aware of Steve's channel. And I'd love him to give us a shout out. Get him to give us a shout out, guys. Of defending Elvis. Um, right. I want to keep going with Spotlight Spy. Um, I like just listening Letting her do her thing, because she's amazing at it. I, You know I have a lot of praise for Spotlight Spy. And rather than me constantly talking... Uh, yes, you got it, Lou. That's his channel. All right, so he's... So, Lily, he's mentioned our channel before. Is that true? Has he mentioned our channel before? Um, I'd love to see that. I'd love to see him mentioning our channel. Um, right, let's have a look. So, I want to... Do you know what? I'm going to play... Let's have a look. I'm going to play the Navarone one. And I'll tell you why. Because I need to know more about it. And more about Navarone. I'm still learning. So let's just have a listen. If I get bored, I'll stop it and we'll play a different one. That's wonderful. And uh, Navarone, right? Hey, guys. I wanted to update everybody on the latest... Uh, I started researching a bit about Navarone. This is Lisa Marie's half-brother, those of you that don't know. And um, for the reason, because A, he's in the news, uh, and that's what I'm all about. I'm trying to break down the news information for you guys, the latest celebrity news, asking the stupid questions uh, to try to answer the stupid questions that I may have, sort of a girl's guide to what the heck's going on in the news right now. And we've been covering Lisa Marie Presley, or I have, and now I'm on to, you know, I just can't really pull out of everything surrounding Lisa Marie Presley right now. So you can watch later the previous video that I did on Priscilla contesting the will. See how that unfolds. Lots of good comments. Really appreciate those. Um, and I appreciate you guys uh, subscribing. That is cool. That way I can know I can I know kind of who I'm talking to when I'm talking or when I'm making the next video. So I do look. I look and see um, what the statistics are. You can see that if you don't know. Like uh, I know that all of y'all are like 45 and older. There's a good percentage that are female. Yeah, Anyhow, um, so <sighs> Navarone comes out uh, and releases a song. 
with his new band on uh, February 3rd. And then he's getting a lot of press. And some people have been wondering, why is he in the press? Does that have any relation to what Priscilla's doing, contesting the will? Do they want to take over them? You know, are they trying to keep the money you, coming in to support his now buddy music career? I have a reaction. I'm going to stick. I reacted. To, I did a little video reacting to his song, and I'll stick that on the end of this video. But the this has a lot to cover around Navarone. And where did Navarone come from? Uh, all the way leading to where where he is now and what was the relationship between he and Lisa Marie and all of that. But I think this video, I want to focus on uh, the genesis of Navarone. And that... That comes from, uh, let's see, it's going to date back to 19, well, he was born in 1987. It starts with Priscilla's relationship with a man named Marco Garibaldi, or Garibaldi, I think it's Garibaldi, and um, he was born this is so that's that's Navarone's father. This is interesting. And he was born uh, November thirtieth, nineteen fifty four. He became an entrepreneur in different industries. He was educated at IBM's Systems Research Institute. He became a tech entrepreneur. I mean, my son and works for IBM. Notable relationships have been with Rob Kardashian, uh, uh, billionaire Kirk Krikorian, uh, but the longest one was with Navarone's father, Marco. Garibaldi. And after she uh, divorced Elvis in 1973, she never remarried. Well, so she may have done. In Some of us think she did marry Marco. Under employment with IBM, Garibaldi was brought to the United States doing a career uh, other than software engineer system. And now analyst yeah he pretended he to be italian to didn't he film and television so he started writing short stories for some television episodes Dallas. career change you know going from an ibm systems analyst but yeah you know you, i was a programmer power time, rangers so i understand like the jump to the creative thing uh, so he started writing and he started writing for dallas clue 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 um mm -hmm. And uh, we love Dallas. It was Didn't we said love Dallas? Some of the articles that he wrote a scene specifically for Priscilla, and that's how he and Priscilla met. Patrick Duffy. Woohoo! Yes. Pamela Anderson. We love Pamela yes, Anderson. Right. I wanted to wish you the best of luck. Well, thank you. Garibaldi was 11 years younger than Priscilla. And they met through mutual friends. And three years later, her spokesman, Paul Blotch, revealed that they were expecting a child and referred to Garibaldi as Priscilla's fiance. It was on the set of Dallas that he met Priscilla. Priscilla remained unmarried to Garibaldi. And she played an unmarried woman on the set on D Dallas, Jenna Wade, who was unmarried, pregnant with Bobby Ewing. Her pregnancy was written into the storyline for her character on the soap opera. Interesting. Interesting. So in 1986, she was quoted as saying, since we've been living together, Marco has changed my life. I don't take things so seriously. I find myself laughing. <laughs> this guy you're with has to be strong. Very strong. He's his own person. Um, very secure, very solid. Um, he's Okay, very why is that the sense and it's been good for me. It's the only relationship that I've had that's really, you know, been that solid. This was in 1986. And 1986 was nine years after the death of Elvis Presley. So, wow, I can't believe that. That was so it was early. 1986 doesn't seem so long ago, you know. She looks a bit like so Shauna. Don't you think she looks a bit like Shauna? All stories, Marco Garibaldi was instrumental we love Shauna. In making Graceland merchandising and operations a lucrative business for Lisa Marie Presley as one of... Priscilla's advisors and uh, advised her to make Graceland a museum. Hello, I'm Priscilla Bodier Presley, and I'm very aware of what Graceland has come to mean to so many people throughout the world. And as an executive of his estate, it was my feeling that Graceland should be open to the public so they could share in his accomplishments and have a clearer understanding of not only the legend, but of the man himself. 
And also during this time, we know that she started in Scientology or she was in Scientology. And I think Garibaldi was in Scientology with her, as was, you know, Lisa Marie and then subsequently Navarro. And it was reported Lisa approved of her mother's, Lisa approved of her mother's relationship with Garibaldi and was happy to learn of the pregnancy. Now, Lisa, so Lisa and Navarone were 20 or 19 years apart. And I believe uh, Priscilla had Navarone. And then two years later, Lisa had Riley. So they were both having toddlers at the same time. Uh, so she was very, she, it, it was reported that she was supportive of the pregnancy. They even took Lamaze classes together to form mom body time. And Lisa was also in the delivery room when her mom gave birth to Navarone. And she had that time at the time of, of this article, she had considered her mom, her best friend, role model for motherhood. Uh, later, it was reported by Radar Online that Priscilla found out that Marco was a con or had been a con artist living a life of lies and fakery. Marco reportedly had deceived Priscilla by pretending to be someone he was not. The 63 year old convinced Priscilla that he was from a wealthy, prominent Italian family who had relocated to Brazil when he was very young. The fact is that Marco's real name, last name is Garcia, and he was born in Brazil, not Italy, and changed his last name, inventing an impressive background story in order to hobnob with Hollywood celebrities and bigwigs. Wow. He, 20 years. Well, so my understanding is it wasn't even the 20 years, so we'll get to it. But Navarone is the one who breaks the story for Priscilla. And... It doesn't end well for Navarone and Marco. Um, the lies were not reportedly revealed to Priscilla Presley until her son and half-brother to Elvis Presley's only child, Lisa Marie Presley, Navarone, started receiving texts from a young relative in Brazil, supposedly a cousin. Navarone confronted his father about the information he had received from the distant relative, and it caused a major family blow-up between the father and son with Marco angrily telling Navarone to never speak to him again. And I don't think they have. Uh, it says Marco hasn't spoken to his son since. Navarone can't believe he grew up thinking he was Italian and all this time he was Brazilian. It was a real core shaker for him. Uh, Priscilla's morning. Presley's son shared the information with his mom and stated she obviously felt she was deceived and lied to about a whole lot of things. Just, but it's been so long since Mark I'll just pause that for a second. We're having a bit of an easy live stream today. Um, I've been playing some Spotlight Spy videos on the YouTube channel, amazing YouTube channel. Um, normally, I just waffle and I just talk for ages literally for over an hour i just constantly talk i don't give you guys a chance to say a lot but today i'm being a bit more laid back i'm letting the lady on spotlight spy do her thing uh a special welcome to kirsty thank you so much for joining us i think it's morning where you are i think you have you may have to shoot off is that right you're getting ready for a night shift at work um now we started off with uh, the divorce being read out between Priscilla and Elvis, which I thought was fascinating. And we're just going through some different topics that Spotlight Spy covers. And I'll be honest with you, I know hardly anything about Navarone, about Marco Garibaldi, his relationship with Priscilla. Some say they're secretly married. Do any of you guys think that Marco Garibaldi Garcia supposedly Italian, Brazilian, um, obviously with Navarone. Um, do any of you guys think they secretly got married? So we're just going to carry on playing this. I'm going to pick out another couple of videos from Spotlight Spy. We're going to have a bit of a Spotlight Spy uh, video live stream today. Go back to the beginning of this. If you've only just joined us, 
the divorce, the readout of the divorce is very, very interesting. Very interesting. So let's keep listening, guys. They're gone. I don't think she wants to waste any more energy finding out about more lies. So finding out about any more lies, I think there's not a lot. I searched around a lot. Um, there's not a lot about exactly what happened, but I feel like the relationship did end with some sort of infidelity possibly on his part along with uh, him spending 50 million dollars of uh, Elvis Presley Enterprises money and that's pretty much all I can find so far that's reported if I'm missing anything else and anybody knows anything else about it please comment um, but Marco claims yeah Marco claims right now he makes a living as a big time Hollywood screenwriter, but has been credited with very few pro projects over the last several decades. So as previously reported, Lisa Marie Presley, now, fast forward to now, um, you know, Lisa Marie has a strained relationship with her mother and half-brother Navarone. This was um, reported in Blasting News on 2017. Navarone took to social media, blasting her half-sister with nasty stuff. I uh, look forward to sharing with you what I thought of his song. You'll see that next. And please like and subscribe. Please comment. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks. So I know who's here and what's going on. And we'll talk again. See, I'll tell you what, if you... If you know nothing about Navarone and Marco Garibaldi and how he met Priscilla, um, what his job is, yeah, it says he was an IBM computer consultant, which is a coincidence because that's what my son does. I have a 27-year-old 20, son called Andreas, and he is an IBM computer consultant. But obviously he ventured out into script writing, got involved, I think, with... Is it Power Rangers with Dallas? It says that he introduced himself with a script to Priscilla. He, I mean, he was a good-looking guy, wasn't he? Uh, it sounds to me like he reinvented himself. Um, even speaking with an Italian accent, I've read. Got to know Priscilla. She fell for his charms. and um, But it's all come out now that really he's Brazilian descent. And do you know what? I know that Navarone um, gets a lot of negative press, a lot, yeah? And I know that many Elvis fans are fuming with Navarone for many reasons, yeah? Uh, obviously, he says many things on Instagram and TikTok that we're not happy with about Lisa Marie. I do think they even went through phases where they actually got on well. Um, I will say this about Navarone. Um, He's obviously damaged, has a serious problem with drugs and alcohol. You know, I have to feel sorry for anybody going through any kind of addiction. But I will say this, the pictures that it shows of him here with his, is, is it? Look, no, let me just show you that picture, yeah? He's just a young boy. What? 13, 14, 15 years old. Now, I will say this, guys. What happened to that very normal-looking young boy? No tattoos, no weird piercings, just a young boy with mum and dad, yeah? What happened to damage that boy so much so that he's turned out the way he has? And as a father... Um, Obviously, my eldest boy is 27. Uh, I have a daughter who's 18. Now... And that is Talia. Yes, that is Talia. That's Tino, who's four. What happened, guys? What damaged Navarone so badly that he's become the way he is? He obviously needs help, doesn't he? He needs rehabilitation of... He needs professional help, doesn't he? What happened? What did Priscilla do? What did Marco do? What it worries me, it concerns me that he gets a lot of hate. But do we ignore 
what led him down that path to turn out that way. I, I, my heart says he's a damaged kid. He's no different than the rest of us. He's gone down the wrong pathway, probably got in there with the wrong people, maybe can't handle fame and success. Something went wrong. Something went wrong. Do any of us blame Scientology? Who knows, guys? Something happened. Oh, thanks, Lily. So, uh, yes, I, uh, Kirsty, yes, I joined it. I, I joined it last night. I went through it, actually. It's very, very interesting. I agree. Navarone may have a drug problem, but I'm trying to look. It's a funny one because I know we're called defending Elvis Presley. And I know you guys are very upset with Navarone, very upset with Priscilla and some of the Memphis Mafia. But we have to come from a place of love. We have to come from a place of forgiveness and kindness. So when I break down all the facts about Priscilla, all the wrongdoing that she's done, when I expose her with the lies that are in this book, in my opinion, yeah? I'm not doing it from a place of hate. I'm doing it, let's try and understand it. Let's try and bring out the facts. Let's try and make Priscilla fans understand that they may have been fooled, tricked, brainwashed into believing a fake truth, a rewriting of history, in my opinion. We come from there. We come from that. We don't come from, ah, angry and hate and bitterness. We come from, how can we change your mind? How can we change your mind? Oh, you're welcome, Kirsty. So, uh, Kirsty, Kirsty, just so you know, even though we're called Defending Elvis Presley, and we're all around the world, we're in every country, we're a small family, we're a growing family, we've all got to know each other. Many of us are over 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and... We know each other now. We've been going for a good five months. Uh, my videos and shorts are about two and a half years old, but we didn't become Defending Elvis until about five months ago. And it was the, the Elvis fans that turned me into Defending Elvis. I wasn't Defending Elvis. It was the comments coming in from the fans that changed my mind and made me relook at everything, search for the truth, dig in, do some research, get closer to the reality of what really went on between Priscilla and Elvis and the Memphis Mafia and Dr. Nick and Colonel Tom Parker. So we evolved. We gradually turned into defending Elvis Presley. And now I am a very, very proud defender of Elvis with Team Elvis. We are Team Elvis. We come together at least twice a day and we defend Elvis which means we defend the bloodline and we're proud to do it. And we want to make Elvis fans more proud. We want to make Riley, Finley and Harper even more proud of their heritage, their legacy. And we want to clear up Elvis's image and reputation so the world can be as proud as Elvis as we are as fans. This is our goal and we do it with no hate, with no hate. Right, let me just play another one. I'm going to pick another one. Uh, we've been on a, nearly an hour, so let's just keep going. I've got a little bit longer, guys. Right, let's have a look. I'm going to pick a good one. Um... Right, so there's Lisa Marie Presley's feud in court heats up. So this will be obviously um, Priscilla and Riley. It's coming out now that Priscilla is going to contest what Lisa Marie wanted. So let's just see. I just want to play it, make sure we haven't already played it. I'll press play and we'll see what happens. I found out everything that CNN is reporting, everything that we can determine what happened today in the battle for Lisa Marie Presley's trust. So let's just get started with CNN and uh, 
it looks like. Um, so the court hearing was held in Los Angeles today related to the petition. Priscilla did not appear, nor did Riley, because although we thought that this was going to be a hearing about the trust, it actually has now had that hearing has actually been put off per the request of Priscilla, the petitioner, and today's hearing was just about Michael Lockwood filing for guardianship of Rock, Finley and Harper. So the court on Thursday considered an ex parte petition filed by Michael Lockwood, the father of Lisa Marie Presley's youngest daughter, to be named their guardian ad litem regarding their late mother's will. His attorney, Scott Rand, said he is ready, able, and willing to protect their interests. So protect their interests, we don't even know. What is protect their interests? I, I assume it's over the battle. I don't know where their interests lie. None of us do. Um, attorneys for Priscilla and Riley did not contest Lockwood being named their guardian ad litem nor were they there. I think it was just their attorneys that were there. The judge said that she will issue a written ruling on the matter. So we assume that should come within a day or so, whether or not Lockwood is being named the guardian ad litem. I don't know if, if nobody's contesting it. We assume that that will happen. And it goes over that this is the petition. This is over this hearing or upcoming hearings are over a petition filed by Priscilla that is disputing the 2016 amendment to Lisa Marie Presley's will. It removed her mother and her former business manager, Barry Siegel, as co-trustees, replacing them with her children, Riley and Benjamin Keogh. Let me just pause that. And are you... I know this is old news, we all know it, but I like to hear it. I like to hear someone else's version of it. But you think about it. Lisa Marie, you think about, you put yourself in Lisa Marie's shoes. What she did then, when she removed, when she removed them like that. Never even told her mother. She must have had some serious reasons to make that decision. She must have been very, very worried about Priscilla. Let's just keep listening. Uh, the petition alleges that Priscilla did not receive the amendment while her daughter was alive. And she's saying that that was required by the trust. She says that it was spelled her name. It wasn't her signature. It wasn't witnessed or notarized. And she never received a copy. All we heard that Barry Siegel said that he did. So that's all about the trust issue. But as far as today, the next series is May 16th. But if you go over the case summary real quick, I think we can get a little bit more information from what's going on. This is obviously uh, a... This is from the Superior Court of Los Angeles. This is the case information. It is a petition about what they are calling the Promenade Trust that stated January 29, 1993. So that was the original one. And um, so today they spoke about the, the guardianship. And the next hearing is May 16th. And that is the trust hearing. The people within the party uh, or all of those associated with this case are those that have filed petitions with the court to be involved and some of them are and some of them aren't. For instance, Entertainment Tonight, Fox News, KNBC. It looks like they all filed a media request to be able to either take pictures, photograph, or I assume stream live the um, the hearing, and those look like they were all denied. Uh, and then we have, of course, Harper and Finley and Michael Lockwood and Michael Lockwood. He's he's here all you know to represent Harper and Finley. And then um, the attorney for the petitioners, Brian Malloy, the attorney for. Um, Riley is Sean Muntz, and then Priscilla, who is the petitioner. Um, 
So again, they came to court today and we can see all the history of what they've been doing so far and um, the media that had been denied. So I'm not sure why Priscilla may have asked for an extension. Maybe it was to scoot over to let Michael Lockwood in so he could use this hearing to become the guardian ad litem. Uh, but she is the one who asked for the extension. I think that some of them put in requests um, to be able to attend remotely. And I don't know if that was for today or if that was for later, because we know that Priscilla is currently in Europe on her Priscilla Presley tour. Um, she's been... She's still doing it now, guys. Around, um, let's see all the latest that she's been doing. She's been out and about meeting fans, talking about Elvis. The um, This is where she is at right now, um, meeting her fans, discussing all the untold things about Elvis, more pictures of her evening out. I guess she's got a pretty good fan base over here. She definitely does. This is what it looks like when you enter. It's a converse, It's Priscilla Presley. She's having a conversation with Edith Bowman. Uh, sharing personal stories and never before seen footage with Elvis. So um, I guess she's too busy to stop and, you know, sue for the trusts. Or maybe she just needs a delay in it while she, you know, goes around and, and tries to um, continue to, to talk about Elvis as much as she can before, you know, the time is up. But I, that's just how I'm taking this race around the world. Although maybe she's been doing this all along and I just didn't pay attention, which could be true. Uh, 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 looks like the Daily Mirror is coming out with an article um, where she's talking about her life with Elvis. This is just a screenshot of it. So uh, the fine print is... It, just about, I guess, her talking more about the, um, what she reveals in her reveal all on the UK tour. I know here it says in a quote that after we, she's saying in this quote, after we divorced, uh, he would come to the house in the middle of the night. This is on Priscilla Presley on Elvis's secret visits to her home. So maybe there's a lot of stuff out there that we don't know about that went on between she and Elvis after the fact. You know, maybe Elvis was coming around. Mm. This is nah. more pictures of Priscilla with her fans. Some are reporting that John Travolta is trying to um, we heard this. broker some sort of... Um, bridge between the feuding Presley. So, you know, I, I don't think that that we're, we're all aware that there is a feuding Presley's so that she is not speaking to Riley. I know in some of the comments that you all have left specifically that, uh, talking, discussing how Priscilla did the business side and may, uh, Lisa Marie was not involved in it, but again, I just really want everybody to remember that um, this isn't about Lisa Marie's involvement in the trust. This is about whether Riley should be inheriting her mother's estate. Of course, she should. In her mother's trust. She's the grandkid, and um, uh, she's the daughter. How much help John Travolta might be, I don't know. Obviously, it's a Scientology thing. I mean. I don't see like Priscilla or Riley running around with John Travolta necessarily. So I'm assuming that this must be somehow related to Scientology since he's involved in it. Definitely. Or he's involved in Scientology. Definitely. Uh, Lisa Marie, this article says that Lisa Marie once confessed that the Grease star was her last Scientology friend. So John has been on the phone. This is what the article says that John has been on the phone 
with Priscilla, not only talking about Lisa Marie, but what she should, what she would have wanted, said an insider. So uh, maybe he's fine for Lisa Marie. Maybe he is. He knows things were frosty between Priscilla and Lisa Marie at the end. But he tells the Presley women they need each other to get through these dark times. So Riley 33 and Priscilla 77 are due to face off against each other. They're saying the court April 13th. But again, I think we found out what April 13th was. And now we are looking on to... I'm sorry, May 16th, the trust hearing. Very interesting, seeing how it all unfolded. So, not televised, it looks like, although the media tried, right? Anyhow, that's today's update. Very interesting. So, another a special thank you to Spotlight Spy. Thank you so much. An amazing YouTube channel. Please subscribe to it. So, we know how that all turns out. Yeah? They eventually... Um, she's not going to get given a burial spot next to Elvis. Riley gives her an indication that, yes, there's a possibility she may be able to be buried in the meditation garden under the right circumstances. I think it's 50-50. Yeah. Uh, we have the million-dollar one-off payment. Then we have the... Um, I think it was the $400,000 legal fees. Riley agreed to pay them. And I think there is some kind of advisory. Um, is it $100,000 a year? Uh, I personally think Riley, this is just my opinion. I know she was under a lot of pressure. She's lost her mum. It's her grandmother. I think Riley was between a rock and a hard place, has been through hell. I think she was under pressure to agree to some of these terms. Priscilla seemed to be happy with what they agreed between them. But I will say this, that since that agreement, I see a Priscilla that has become very separate. I know there was a couple of functions they attended together. But generally, Priscilla has gone off and done her own thing, really creating her own business with these personal appearances, cash for autographs, and she's become a larger presence on Instagram and branching out to TikTok, etc. Much more of a social media awareness now with Priscilla. Even, you know, no sign of any grieving, which we find difficult to watch because we feel as Elvis fans that we want to see Priscilla grieve over Lisa Marie. Um, obviously, we miss Lisa Marie terribly. So we grieve as fans. So we don't understand why Priscilla comes across so uncaring, cold, and maybe she can't help it. Maybe she wants to uh, grieve very privately. She must be hurting. She must be gutted. She must be. She couldn't. She can't not be hurting. You know, you 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 you're not human if you don't grieve over the loss of your daughter. Don't forget, and Benjamin. Yeah. So people will say it's none of our business, and they're right. It isn't none of our business, but we feel a very, a real disconnect from Priscilla. And again, I repeat myself, this is no hate Priscilla channel. I'm not trying to be hateful. I'm trying to make sense of it. I'm trying to make sense of, you know, I could put up, I'll give you an example, guys. Um, I could put up, I could go to Instagram, Yeah. Let's go to Instagram. Now, bearing in mind, it hasn't been long since poor Lisa Marie passed. God rest her soul. We miss her so much. I could go to Priscilla's um, uh, Facebook page, yeah? Let's just see what this one is. Let me just turn up the volume. And everything about her Facebook page is about the next personal appearance. Everything. 
But let me just play play it for you guys. Let me just I'll play a couple more. Let's have a look. Let's just pick them at random, yeah? I'll do one more. Um... So the point I'm trying to make, guys, is that we as fans, yeah, Elvis fans, of course, Lisa Marie fans, the the Elvis's bloodline, we 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 really feel protective over Riley Q. We feel protective over Finley and Harper, even Benjamin. Their image, their reputation, to protect their legacy. Yeah, we don't understand that. We don't get it. You've lost your Obviously, firstly, you lost your grandson. She also had lost her mother, hasn't she, Priscilla? Then she loses her daughter. Yeah? What is going on? What What is happening? I, I'm a Christian man. I'm a kind man. I have a good heart. But I can't understand it. I can't piece that together. I really feel that Priscilla should be with her grand, with her grandkids, guys. She should somehow be mourning, more you know, grieving. Uh, I don't mean she she should walk around um, depressed and give up. I don't mean that. But there is a respectful way to grieve publicly. I think, yeah, there's a respectful way to grieve publicly. And I personally don't think the Instagram. I don't think. That's the way to do it. And this is also causing a problem, a rift with the fans. It's causing a rift with the fans. The fans are like, mm, it makes her look like she doesn't care. That she's that she doesn't care that she lost Benjamin. She lost Lisa Marie. I believe she does care. But there's definitely something not right. There's just something not... now to reconnect with the fans. I think if Priscilla at least gave a proper interview with people like Piers Morgan, a proper interview, yeah, um, that the fans can relate to and believe and trust. I think she could make a difference. She could maybe win the affections of the public. Maybe she could um, apologise for the fact that we, the public, we, the Elvis fans, feel that there's many things that she has done and said about Elvis that are untrue, unfair. The fact that she contested Lisa Marie's, um, what Lisa Marie wanted, yeah, after she passed away. That has upset the fans so much. And then again, I always keep saying it, the fact that the Priscilla film was made, Sophia Coppola's Priscilla film, and she just went along with it, even though her daughter had died. And it was very clear that her daughter did not want it made. Anyway, guys, i got to go. So um, we've been on for an hour and 12 minutes. I uh, hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, different than normal um, video, because I've allowed Spotlight Spy to take the lead. Please go to the beginning of this video. I think you'll find it very interesting. We listen to the divorce in detail. I think you'll find it very, very interesting. Okay, guys, I'll see you tomorrow morning. Love to all of you. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. I, I love spending my days with you. This is our second live stream today, and we've got many more to come. And I'll see you in the morning, guys, for another coffee. Now, if you've enjoyed what I do, hit the buy me a coffee button or hit the thank you button, super thank you, whatever you call it. Become a member. It's a dollar a month. It helps me out. It shows me that you appreciate what I do. Thank you very much for the new members that have joined us. Anyone that buys me a coffee, guys, thank you very much. Thumbs up. Makes me feel like I'm doing something right. Thanks, guys.
You take care. All the best. Have a great day.